You're listening to the Weekly Wrap-Up on Sprott Money News. Happy Friday from Sprott Money News at SprottMoney.com. It's Friday, August the 21st. It's time for your Weekly Wrap-Up. I'm your host, Craig Hemke. Joining us as usual on a fine Friday morning is Eric Sprott himself. Eric, good morning. Hey, Craig, good morning. Kind of a ho-hum kind of week, but uh, lots to chat about. Boy, that's for sure. And it has been ho-hum. It feels like it's been lousy. But as you and I begin to record, gold's only down a couple of bucks and silver's actually up almost 2%. <laughs> so I guess it's not as bad as you think. Um, and hey, I just want to remind everybody before we get started, uh, please go to the SprottMoney.com homepage and you'll find there in the navigation bar all sorts of uh, interesting blogs. That's where you can find these weekly wrap-ups. You can go back and listen to ones in the past. But you can also find our monthly segment called Ask the Expert. I recorded about two days ago this month's version with David Morgan, who everybody knows, a renowned silver expert. The guy's devoted his entire life to following silver. And he runs the Morgan Report, which is a great uh, newsletter, subscriber newsletter for investing in the resource sector. So please uh, click that that, uh, navigation bar, find the insights tab, drop down to Ask the Expert, and give a listen. I think uh, you'll definitely benefit from listening to what David Morgan has to say. Well, now I want everybody to listen to what Eric Sprott has to say. Eric, it's been a, a crazy week. We've got to start somewhere. So I think I will start with the news that hit, what, yesterday, day before? I, it all runs together for me about Scotiabank being fined by uh, the U.S. DOJ and the Inspector Clouseau's at the CFTC. And in their fine, they had to admit to the quote was thousands of occasions of manipulating the prices of gold and silver. I'll just tee that up for you and let you take it from there. You just wanted to get my blood boiling, didn't yes, you? Yes, yes. I wanted to get because you all worked I, up. I, it, it bothers me, it distresses me to think that it was from the period, what, 2008 to 2016, and I heard tens of thousands. And it's not just spoofing in the markets. It's misquoting where the precious metals are trading to their advantage you know, we got a sucker client here wants to buy something through us. Well, we'll just misquote where the product is trading and cheat him a little. And um, I mean, I find it disgusting. I hope all Canadians will refuse to deal with Bank of Nova Scotia. And of course, now and then I got to go to TD Bank that just got fined 122 million today for cheating people on uh, what was it? They they charged him for overdraft protection, even though the guy hadn't signed up for the overdraft protection. Jeez. So, and I mean, it's kind of you know, we're, we should be getting so used to these banks getting fined all the time. I mean, there's hardly a bank that can honestly say they're they're honest here. So, but the Scotia thing really ticks me off because you know I've had to live through this time, oh eight yep. to sixteen to today, and you just see the things that go on in the market. And of course, during that time, the CFTC had a five year investigation, found no wrongdoing. Okay. And then they patting themselves on the back for coming up with this judgment against Bank of Nova Scotia. Are you kidding me, CFTC? Yeah. You're such a loser organization, I can hardly believe it. And I hope you're listening because you've done a dis- horrible disservice to the public that you're supposed to be representing here. And, you know, we've also already had, what was it, Deutsche Bank, UBS, uh, HSBC, J.P. Morgan, all admit to... Uh, paying fines for manipulating uh, the price of uh, precious metals. Never having said they they actually did it, they just paid the fine, okay? They paid the fine because they were accused of it, but never admitted it in in the public's mind, and no one ever goes to jail. So, no, it just drives me crazy thinking about what we've had to go through here. You know, you go and you fight the fight every day, and you got some guy cheating you every day. So it's just disgusting. Welcome to the sector, Warren Buffett, though. Uh, wonder what he will yeah. think about watching his uh, investment in Barrick fluctuate up and down based upon what the boys at the banks want to do. Yeah, and how, let's just take today. I mean, uh, not uh, 20 minutes ago, the price of silver was down a dollar on, this, on, the, uh, on the CME. Down a dollar. went down a dollar in about three minutes. Well, where yeah. the hell is the CFTC today? Yeah. Since when should something go down a dollar, i.e. about 5% or 4% of its value, in like two minutes? Does it, do they think that somebody is uh, uh, 
creating this downdraft purposely? Yes, they probably are. Maybe let's run some stops here so we can try to cover our short. And yes, Warren, welcome. Uh, unfortunately, I don't really believe it's Warren that made the decision. I think it was uh, some of his uh, investment offers that made the decision. But of course, it was encouraging uh, to see them step in there because obviously they're looking at the earnings and cash flows of yep. America and thinking, man, this is quite inexpensive versus the rest of the universe out there. So we're going to start putting some money into gold and silver stocks. And of course, we've talked many times about how inexpensive uh, many stocks are including the key ones that have earnings, are, of course, are Kirkland Lake, and I've spoken about Jaguar, and how incredibly inexpensive these things were, uh, and how, how there's been such great opportunity. And, of course, the opportunities continue to present themselves. There's not a day goes by. I'm, I'm not looking at uh, looking for someone who's going to have some spectacular earnings uh, when their production is normal, when the pricing is, uh, let's say, $2,000, which it was, and, and what kind of earnings are going to come up and how cheap the stock is. And I, I still think there's lots of opportunities there. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, as terrible as the global economy is, it's certainly not bouncing back in any type of V shape. That's just kind of nonsense to think it would even. Uh, as terrible as the global economy is, there's no other market sector that has surging earnings and increasing dividends. And so it, it is helpful to think that, it, you know, maybe folks will at the institutional level look around and go, well, geez, if Warren Buffett's buying some, maybe we ought to check it out. And we've seen the GDX is outperforming the GDXJ this week, which is notable in that regard, because that's where people put their toes in first. Um, Eric, the other thing that's hanging out uh, over our heads in terms of price, we also have the September, I'm sorry, not, yeah, the September <laughs> Comex Silver contract. Uh, options going off the board next week and also the contract going off the board. I would imagine you'll be watching that too. Sure. I think there's four trading days left, maybe five. Uh, they got about 60-odd thousand contracts, which is 300 million ounces of silver. Now, it won't be 300 million ounces of silver, but I would suggest that if it was 50 million ounces of silver, that would be a significant delivery request, and that's entirely possible. Um and the, the, the one thing I think about silver, and I've expressed this many times now recently, is that things have changed in the silver market. These <clears throat> banks could automatically get the price of silver down and keep, important word, keep it down through the derivatives contracts. I don't think that's the case anymore. They're, they have this open interest, which they're trying to cover. They're using all sorts of shenanigans to try to get uh, unsuspecting people to sell them their position so they can cover their short. Their short position is hardly declining. The, the open interest is still as large as it's almost ever been. So somebody, in, in total, somebody out there short a billion ounces of silver in a market that might produce 900 million, of which maybe, maybe 300 million is available for investment. But, you know, they're going to have a tough time covering. I think the 35-year suppression of metals is over. And I think silver goes to 15 to 1. And I, I feel very, very strongly about that. And, of course, it's all, this is while gold's probably going to go north of 3,000 or whatever number you want to pick, but it'll be a lot higher than here. Almost every data point I look at in silver is screaming at me that 15 to 1 is a minimum number. So, for example, SLV traded one-third of the dollar value of GLD yesterday. One-third do we realize how much fewer dollars of silver are available to buy for saving versus gold every year? It's, there's probably 50 times more gold to buy than silver. So people can't keep buying it at a one to third rate and expect that the price is going to stay here. And the only reason it stayed here is because these guys kept building up this huge short position, which they now have to cover. And the real difficulty is when you've been the seller all that time, who's going to sell it to you when you have to cover? So they, I think that's why we're seeing so much volatility in the price. They keep trying to run stops here, and, and just like they did this morning. And then, of course, it bounces right back up again because they're still in the jam. So we have all of that to look forward to. Yep, that's for sure. <clears throat> and Eric, I, I got, we had 85 questions this week. I'm going to combine two into one real quick uh, just to get your thoughts. Um, someone who wrote in and said, Hey, you know, how can there be a shortage of silver? I hear Andrew McGuire talking about not being able to get silver. 
I can get all the silver uh, kilo bars that I'd like, and I've got I can get all the eagles that I'd like. Uh, I'll answer that one. That's uh, that's because Andrew Deal is a wholesaler. He deals in the thousand ounce bars, the big mamas, right? Those are the ones that are yeah. very hard to come by these days. And then, and go ahead. I think another answer is this too: that if you go to coins, but you're gonna you might pay eight dollars above the spot silver price, right? Which means there aren't a lot of them. And of course, the mint uh, off and on seems to have silver available, then unavailable, available, unavailable. Uh, and you're right. I mean, uh, when you deal in large sizes, uh, th- they don't come as quickly as you might expect. Yeah. yeah. And um, I- I'm absolutely convinced when I look at the data for the COMEX deliveries, the ETF, ETFs have, have tacked on about uh, 1.2 million ounces silver ETFs every day. We only mine two and a half million ounces. It's not all available for ETFs, okay? Right. Most of it's supposed to go to industry. So, no, it's coming for sure. Well, and in, in that Ask the Expert interview with David Morgan, I asked him, because you and I talk about this every week, you know, this alleged silver that's flowing into the SLV. And I said, could that actually be happening? I think he laughed out loud first. And then we went on to answer the question. The other part of this two-part question was uh, for people that are c- concerned about the SLV, you know, what's the, can you just explain to them again, the difference between the SLV and then the, the Sprott managed PSLV? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, for an American resident, one of the big differences is normal income at, at, when you sell it at a profit. Okay. It's normal income, not capital gains. Uh, in the case of PSLV, it, it is treated as a capital gain because it's a trust. But the other, the most significant thing is PSLV, I can personally guarantee you, has the silver. SLV, eh, you know, when you look at the, theoretically what they're putting in every day and you say, well, where, where are you getting that from? Like, I just don't get where you're getting all this silver from. So uh, I've always been in the camp that doubts that the SLV and the GLD uh, have what they say they have. And, of course, we, we do know today that the GLD, for example, says that they have – some kind of understanding with the Bank of England mm-hmm. that the gold that theoretically has been purchased is available to the GLD, but it's over in England somehow. So who knows how that deal is working? Maybe it's really just a lease. So if you want to be certain, find an ETF that you 100% know has the product. And in the case of the PSLV, um, you can actually, if you have a big enough position, you can redeem it for the metal and right. and people have done that before so you can't redeem slv no not unless you're a bank if you're a, yeah. one of the banks you can oh boy all right so eric uh i think we've covered about everything but before we get to some of these stocks i just want to make sure i haven't missed anything uh i don't know that i have much more on my chest other than uh, i mean to me the biggest uh thing to play here is is this potential massive change in what's going to happen in the silver market uh, I would remind people that if you traded at 15 to 1, the silver price would be about 150 bucks today. And, I, you know, it's fine to say, you know, that you can poo-poo it all you want. You're not paying for that. I'm suggesting where it might go. You don't have to pay for that yet. You just get to play for it, which is by a much more interesting way of looking at it. I mean, if it really happens, think of the returns, the oh outsized gosh. returns you're going to get. So. And uh, which takes me actually to my first name, of course, which is one that I've talked about before. It's Discovery Mines. Uh, they had some great uh, drilling intersections mm-hmm. over a kilo of silver, which is 30 ounces silver. 30 ounces silver at uh, 28 bucks is worth about 800 odd dollars. That's equivalent to about 0.4 of an ounce of gold. There weren't many mines with 0.4 of an ounce of gold, uh, but it would be highly profitable. Huge deposit down there in Mexico. Uh, I'm just I'm dreaming about the price of silver being 150 bucks and what that might be worth. So I still love that. Uh, there was a great interview. I should direct the listeners that care about Discovery Mines. Taj Singh, who is the uh, CEO, was interviewed. Uh, that interview is probably available on YouTube. So Taj Singh, I would suggest if you're interested in following up on it, listen to the interview. And I, I was quite... Uh, uh, quite surprised by the bullishness that was expressed, and obviously because the drilling has been very successful, mm-hmm. and, and the infill has, and I think we're going to have the grade go up, 
and the amount of waste go down and the economics improving and man you're not paying much for it if we, if we get the move in silver that I suspect we're getting and um, on that front just to think that it's gone from 125 to 1 to 66 to 1 in about 6 weeks that tells you something we're going we're probably going to 15 to 1 yep uh, I want to talk about uh, Wallbridge only because it, it's being put out there that it might go into the GDXJ yet again. Mm, it missed mm-hmm. it last time, as you may recall. Yep. That decision is made, I think, in the middle of September. So that's three weeks away. People start positioning for that ahead of time. So Wallbridge has perked up a little here, and I think it's because it may very well get in, be, be uh, put into the GDXJ. Uh, I mentioned the I'll, I'll mention the drilling at uh, Silvercrest. They had some great holes. Uh, all these stocks, by the way, most stocks are in a funk right now. I mean, not much is going up. I mean, you bring out good results and nobody cares. But you know, good results ultimately will end up uh, being improved uh, earnings going forward. So someday you're going to get paid for this. So don't worry about the the non-performance of the stocks over the interim because uh, certainly the fundamentals both at the corporate level and at the uh, the precious metal macro level, have done nothing but improve. So uh, everything looks pretty good. And like I mentioned earlier, Eric, we had 85 questions this week. A lot of people uh, very appreciative of the information you provide every week. So what I try to do is just try to find the companies that were asked about more than once, and sometimes it's two or three times, and we try to get to those to make sure we get as many people uh, answered as we could. Uh, Discovery Metals was in there. We had a lot of people asking about Wallbridge again, so thank you for hitting those. Uh, another one that people wanted to know about was uh, Grand Columbia, and because uh, you had moved into that, but have now mostly moved back out. Just what's going on there? Yeah. yeah. Well, as I suggested, uh, that's one of the broadcasts. Uh, I w- wasn't that pleased with um, doing a, um, a stream on one of the ore bodies that uh, was part of Grand Columbia. And, of course, I, I reflect back on it now, and I think, oh, my God, you did a stream when silver was 17, and today it's 27, and, oh, my God, what, how, ba- how big a mistake was that? I mean, I just don't like the idea of doing a stream when, you, when you're in the precious metal business. You're supposed to like the precious metal, not, not trying to hedge yourself in. So, anyway, I just th- – there were things like that on the gold note, which also diluted what was going to happen in the future. These are both uh, decisions made in – this subsidiary called Caldas. So I thought, eh, I just, I'm not aligning with some of these decisions, so what am I hanging around for? Yeah. So that pretty well explains it. That explains that. And then you mentioned uh, stocks that just aren't really doing anything. I mean, it's frustrating to watch, but progress moves forward, and they still have the metal in the ground. And so we had a number of questions this week wondering about Tudor and Teuton because all they've done is drift lower for the last three or four yeah. weeks. And free gold's been drifting yeah. as well. Just your thoughts on yeah. those. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, it's interesting. When I wake up, uh, one of the first things I look for is drilling news. Because, I, of course, I, with great anticipation, I, I'm waiting for Tudor two, uh, two, two to report results and Freegal Ventures to report results. But we haven't got the results yet. So in this environment where everything's kind of softening up here, uh, why it's softening up, I don't know. Maybe maybe there's just some deep fear or that the prices, this metal price will come down. Or people made so much money that there's always a reason to sell, as you know, but there's not always a reason to buy. And the reason to buy will be some stellar drilling results. So we have to wait that out, and uh, I hope in both cases the results are great. Uh, I believe they will be, but you, know, you, you never know until you get there. So I still own every share that I ever have purchased, and uh, I'm anxiously waiting to see the drilling results. I know people are wondering, so do I. (laughs) Yeah. Well, anybody who owns a stock, you know, I don't know what the high end free gold was, probably a buck 80 or something, Canadian. Yeah. And now it's, what, 140 or something. And I guess it's a little bit stomach churning, but, you know, if their holes hit, we'll be right back at the high, I'm absolutely convinced. And the same with Tudor. I mean, they did have a good drilling result about, I'm going to say three weeks ago, maybe four weeks ago, they can follow it up with another one. We'll be we'll be right on cue again. You know, and and just to double back to Wallbridge, you meant I'd forgotten about that uh, not being included in the GDXJ last quarter, and a lot of people, you know, how come the Wallbridge been pulling back when it was not included? That was about the last little short term peak, 
And so yeah. I wonder if that won't start moving it back higher again. Well, I think it started to move back higher on that. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it hit a low of 90. I think it closed yesterday at 103 or 104 or something. So it's come back uh, without much news being out there. I mean, yes, there was one drilling result, which it did react to. Plus, I think they got a new interpretation of exactly what they have at Fenelon, and it's, I think it will become obvious that between the various styles of ore there, that they could very well have a, an ore body that uh, will exceed 10 million ounces. So we just have to wait for more drilling, but it's kind of shaping up uh, as we would expect. Yep. All right. Well, we're definitely in kind of the dog days and doldrums of summer, where it seems like everybody's on vacation globally, trying to get some downtime before we get into September. And I know we are going to have a busy September. I do want to remind everybody, though, um, the Fed, always the Kansas City Fed, always hosts the their annual Jackson Hole Symposium. Remember those? They all all those central bankers from around the world go out to Wyoming. Absolutely. You see them out May there as well. Yep. I don't know what the hell they'll all talk about that will be worthwhile, but. I guess they'll have, they can at least have a party. That's right. And it's going to be online this year, like everything else is online. Oh, uh, right. But that is next week, and uh, Chairman Powell is supposed to speak on Thursday. So it's maybe quiet and dull drumming out there, but there's still reason to watch the news, and there's still reason to uh, listen to the weekly wrap-up, that's for sure. Eric, uh, before we wrap, I want to make sure, anything else on your mind this week as we go? Yeah, well, I should have mentioned, I mean, the setup for uh, – for the uh, Chairman Powell to speak, I think he's going to talk to letting inflation run a little above the norm. I think that's what it is. That they say, well, you know, we our target was to, we never got to for the last 10 years, so if it runs a little hot, we're going to let it go. And speaking of hot, there's no doubt that we have lots of inflation here. I don't know if anybody's looked at the price of anything to do with construction materials, but they've gone absolutely bonkers, if, if they're available. Uh, I've always watched something called the Chapwood Index, which is a measure of 500 different things that people buy, uh, and it's published every month. And every year, the index is up 10% a year, and I'm sure it's and it's up 10% so far this year at an annualized rate. I've never been a believer that there's no inflation here. The, the, the way they count inflation says there's no inflation, but believe me, there's lots of inflation. So I think he's going to open it up here that uh, he's going to allow inflation to run because I think they probably know it is running already. Yeah, yeah. And again, that just institutionalizes negative real rates because they're probably going to slap on yield curve control at the same time. Gold got to $2,100 with real rates negative 1.1%. Where will gold be at negative real rates of 2%? 3%. Yeah. There, so. There's no doubt that the big shift is in the bond market, right, where people are saying, I don't think I really want to be here and make my... Uh, 0.6% and actually lose 1.5% a year. And as you say, it would get worse. And I think it's the bond guys allocating the gold, believe it or not, because yeah. obviously equity guys have done well here, okay? It's the bond guys that uh, are saying we need some diversification. So, yeah, that, it could be very exciting for gold here. Sure could. So watch those headlines next week. Oh, and one last thing before we go. Uh, Sprott Money is going to be launching a brand new website on Monday. Uh, listening to our customers, we made a faster, easier to use website that we're excited to share with everybody. It's going to launch on Monday, but in the meantime, SprottMoney.com is going to go down tonight at uh, eight o'clock Eastern. So if you go on this weekend and see that uh, you get an error, if you go to SprottMoney.com, it's not like we've we've left town or anything, right, Eric? It's, it's just that we're taking the side offline to roll out the new one, and I think you're going to like it. You will still, of course, find all the best deals on the bullion and bullion storage at SprottMoney.com. So check us out Monday, this coming Monday, August 24th, for a brand new and improved SprottMoney.com. Uh, I don't know if we, there's much we can do to make a brand new and improved Eric Sprott, but uh, hey, I think you're doing all right, and we'll talk to you again next next week. I will look forward to it. I hope we get a rally here in the gold price. I mean, they, they kind of had their way for the first hour or so, but uh, we're working our way back here, and hopefully we get a nice, strong close and uh, launch into a, a great week next week. It's going to be interesting. All right, my friend, have a great weekend. Okay, you too, Craig. And Bye from all of us at Sprott Money News at SprottMoney.com, thank you for listening. Have a great weekend.